In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. It is very fitting that we have our first public Sunday Mass on the Feast of the Holy Trinity. A reminder that God is a trinity of persons who loves community and is drawing us, his beloved children, also into community with one another. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mysteries, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths. From your throne upon the cherubim. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not delivered because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peter Kreeft, in a book that he wrote entitled Jesus Shock, at the beginning of it asks this really interesting question. He says to pull out a piece of paper and to answer these questions. The first being, who are some of the most important persons that you have ever met and have influenced your life? So I humored myself and I got my piece of paper out and I wrote down three different names. Father Jeff Heward, who was the inspiration for my vocation. He was my spiritual director throughout seminary. Pope Benedict XVI, who was the Pope during my time at seminary, and I actually got to meet him when I was in Rome studying. And then I added a couple of names of high school friends that really kind of helped me to think about the world in a new way and was really kind of a catalyst for my vocation. So I put these down and then I kind of turned the next page to see what Peter Kreef was going to say I should do with these names. And he said, well, if you're a Christian... I hope that you answered this question with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and honestly, I was quite embarrassed that me as a priest didn't even have one of the persons of the Trinity on my radar as one of the most important persons that I had ever met. No, I'm not sure that I'm alone in my pagan response to this question. As I think it's actually quite easy to forget that God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are actually persons of the Trinity whom we can individually get to know on a very intimate level. And each one of them has a particular role in our process towards salvation. We can actually and are supposed to point to things in our life 
where we have had our lives influenced and changed by one of the persons of the Trinity. In fact, all of us who call ourselves Christian began our Christian journey with the pouring of water over our head, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thus, our very life as Christians is yoked to this most holy trinity. And yet, I would venture to say that we Christians are not really intimately interacting with this mystery of our faith. Although every time we profess our faith in the trinity, we do so at Mass in the Creed, and we say clearly that we do believe in three persons but one God, even though it seems more mystical than relational. Now, this may seem odd to say, but in all of my work in doing spiritual direction with people, I have found that people usually have their go-to person in the Trinity. And even if I were to survey the people here, or even put online, who is your favorite person in the Trinity, odds are that we would all have one that are kind of our go-to, the Father, or I just feel like Jesus is my brother, or maybe you're one of those crazy charismatics that can't get enough of the Holy Spirit. But this is not how the Trinity is supposed to work with us Christians. It's not like we're back in grade school and we just have our favorite friend of the Trinity and everyone else kind of just follows along with the rest. Each person in the Trinity desires to reveal something unique to us about God, as well as assist us in a unique way of life. And something is actually lost in our Christian journey if we do not engage God in this way. Now, it's important for us Christians to realize how unique this teaching of the Trinity is. Yes, there are, throughout different religions, kind of overlaps with certain things of, you know, belief in one God or even how you should treat your neighbor and some things like this. Christians are the only religion in the world that have a belief in God being one but three persons. If it is the Trinity that defines us as Christians, then we must have it at the very center and core of who we are and how we relate in the spiritual life. Now, St. Augustine, who lived in the fourth century, is said to have been walking along the beach in his diocese in North Africa. And he was contemplating, as a Christian, this mystery of the Trinity because he wanted to write about it. And so as he's pondering these mysteries and he's walking along the beach, he sees this little child in the distance. And the child had dug a hole in the sand and was running into the water with a a seashell, bringing water over to the hole and then dumping the water in the hole. And Augustine watched this little kid do this over and over again. And finally, Augustine went up to him and said, what are you doing? And the young child said, I'm trying to fit the whole ocean into this hole. And Augustine says, you can't do that. What is wrong with you? That's impossible. And the child looked up at him and said, so too is you trying to fit all of the mystery of the Trinity into one book. (laughs) (laughs) Touche. But what Augustine learned from this moment is that even though the Trinity is truly a mystery that will never fully contain, it began to reveal to him that he had to think about the Trinity in a new way. And so as he began to write, he developed this new articulation of the Trinity that's brilliant. He said each person of the Trinity has a different mission in this world. Each person of the Trinity has something that they've been entrusted with to reveal. The Father who created all things, the Son who redeemed them, and the Spirit that sanctifies. And although there's difference in mission, they share the one God. It is actually quite easy to get to know the individual persons of the Trinity and all that it requires is intentionality. Is that when we go to prayer, we're actually conscious of what part of the Trinity we are relating to rather than just God in general. Now maybe an analogy would help to illustrate how this is possible. The last two weeks have revealed to all of humanity the incredible importance found in unity through diversity. Each person in the community, no matter their race, their culture, or their gender, all have an important mission to this world. However, this mission is easily undercut without the unity of its members. For without sharing one community founded in equality, 
it is impossible for each person's mission to be completed. Likewise, the Trinity, in whose image and likeness we as human beings are created, it reveals to us that because the unity of the one Godhead, the individual missions of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit flow forth. Just as it is vital for us to get to know the individual members of the Trinity, so too we see events of the nationwide protests erupting from George Lloyd's death as an incredible invitation to see how valuable the individual members of a community are amidst their diversity. For when any member is not valued, respected, and loved, it absolutely destroys the unity of a community and thwarts the mission at hand. For love of God and neighbor is to take precedence above all. As so often happens within our Christian faith, our theology actually gives us a window into how we are to interact with one another. Thus, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Trinity Sunday, we are invited into the most central mystery of our Christian tradition, which, if taken to heart, will also give us new eyes to see the incredible importance of the events that are unfolding in our world, as we as a society strive to be one while valuing each individual, through one intentional relationship at a time. My brothers and sisters, let us stand as we profess that unity of one God and three persons through our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the grace of the Son, we learn of the love of the Father and are drawn into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Through the Son, we come to the Father with prayers inspired by that same Holy Spirit. For Pope Francis and leaders of the church, may they be humbled before the Lord like Moses and lead their people by God's commandments and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May this world be saved through the Son who was sent by the Father, and may the Holy Spirit descend upon the world and bring mankind into fellowship and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity among all people, especially in our nation, that we may mend our ways of pride, arrogance, and division in order to embrace the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and act with charity and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord protect all health care workers, law enforcement personnel, and all other essential workers as they serve and protect our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of Nativity who will receive their first communion this Sunday, may the wondrous gift of the Eucharist nourish their bodies and souls and grant them courage and peace as they journey through life with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the hopeless, and those mourned in our community, as well as those that are sick, 
particularly those afflicted with COVID-19 virus, and especially Nancy Zerzik. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who've died believing in Christ, especially Tim Masterman, George Floyd, Francis McGill, McGill Doris Halverstadt, and the Nativity of Mary Parish for whom this weekend Masses are offered, for the prayers in the Parish Book of Intercessions and the prayers in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, receive the prayers of this people, filled with the Holy Spirit and offering towards Christ, your only Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name. We pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew's auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do have some announcements this evening. The first is Lawn Chair Lexio Divina begins this coming Wednesday, June 10th at 6.30 p.m. There are still spots available, so see the bulletin or website for details or contact Mary Dobson in the parish office. Lexio Divina, or Divine Reading, is a prayerful reflection of the sacred scriptures, so come and learn how to practice this prayer and spend some time in prayer and fellowship with other parishioners. Our Nativity of Mary school fundraiser has been pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, and finally we're going to have it digitally on Thursday, uh, June 11th. And so I would encourage you, if you are able to, uh, go on our website and you can be part of the digital uh, gala for our school. It's going to be actually quite fun. There's a lot of things that we've tried for the first time. And so there's no, you don't have to pay money to get involved, but please do check it out. Uh, again, um, for this fundraiser, uh, Culver's on Nicollet Avenue, David Fong's on Lindale, and David Fong's in Savage are willing to donate 10% of any carry-out sales from 4 to 7 p.m. that night. So if you do want to go out to eat, Thursday is the night to do it because they'll kick back some money to our parish school. We have some very exciting news. I have um, been working with the Pro Ecclesia Sancta Sisters who are in the area at the old Port Clare Convent, and they are coming to teach in our school next year. Uh, and so, yeah, it's wonderful news. So we'll have two sisters teaching middle school religion next year at Nativity of Mary grade school, so please spread the word that we'll have some wonderful new additions to our staff there. Uh, just a reminder for those who are present here at this Mass that uh, communion will be distributed immediately after. The ushers will dismiss you pew by pew, 
And so the dismissal will look a little different for the deacons and I as we'll be taking off our chasubles so that there's less communication of any particles that may happen, and then we'll go right to our stations to split. It is wonderful to be uh, in a community of unity with you all today. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace and give glory to the Lord by the way you live your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.